Righto, we've made some progress. Um, I have the oil pick up tube on. Um, I have to take that main cap bolt out and re torque it the same as the other main cap bolts. It's got the two, I think like 7 sixteenths um, bolts that go down here, hold, your, um, hold the tube in. It's got a small gasket in there. Um, that was torqued up to I think it's 8 to 10 Newton meters. Um, not very tight there. These are the original bolts. The, everything was in really good condition, so I reused them. They're not a high tensile bolt, so be very careful. Don't try and over tighten them. Put a bit of silicon on the base of the. Um, I'll show you. They put a bit of silicon on the base of the. Um, on the base of the block there. Put the gasket on. Put a bit of. Um, yeah, RTV silicon on the bottom of the tube bracket and then screw it up lightly. I leave it sit for, I just nip them up slightly and just leave them sit for like 10 or, 10 or 20 minutes, let the let the silicon sort of flash off a bit. And then then I torque them down eight to 10 newton meters. So again, don't over tighten them, they'll just snap straight off unless you put some grade 8.8 or something in there. Um, what else we're up to here is we've got the camshaft just hanging out. There's the old one on the floor over there in case someone's saying you reuse the original one. It's not, I've just lubed it up with some um, camshaft lube. I'm about to put it in the car, so in the engine. So um, let's get onto that part right now. Sorry for the shaky camera. I'm just trying to keep it on the tripod. Um, but once I get that in, I'm probably going to bolt that pan on the bottom loose. I'll probably put the um, Welsh plugs in as well. Three in, three in the back, three in the front. Um, there's a couple of um, couple of um, small plugs that have got to go in, like you can see over there. Once I get it all fully assembled. I, got, I still got to put the back wash plugs in, but the engine's on the stand, so I can't actually get it out. So um, just be careful putting the cam in. It's a little bit tricky. Um, it fits in the, in the bearing journals really easily, right? So you can see, I'll, I'll, I'll take it right out. The, the first one, that first end bearing is really small, right? So you can see in that, they step up in size slightly as you go through. That first one, that's the bearing journal for the bearing right there. So slide it through. Try not to ding up that those new cam bearings you, you got in your engine. Slide it through. Sometimes it's good to stick like a screwdriver or something in the hole or put a long bolt in the hole to hold it. But I found if you just do it nice and gently, slide it through, lift it, lift it at the front, you'll get it to the to this point here, it gets a little more difficult. I usually just get it through, let it sort of just drop, drop onto the cam lobes in the side. I just rotate it slightly, and you can see it just it just sort of worked its way through the block, um, through the journals, until it gets that last one, which can be a bit tricky, but there you go, that's in there now, right? So the cam is in there. Next thing, I've already pre-lubed. This is the cam, um, the cam retainer clamp. I've already positioned this so you can see what we're doing around the front here. cable for the camera off over there we'll get a bit of a zoom happening down here all right you can see the front the front of the block down there now and you can see this is your oil pump drive down here um, so you just rotate your camera a bit you'll get that to get that to locate just make sure you lube up the gear that drives that make sure you lube up the gear in the back that drives your um, drives your distributor, get that into the position in there, grab your bolt, it's quite a, it's quite a large bolt, um, it's a UNF thread, it's just Ajax brand, this is the one that came with the car, just I came with the engine, just be cautious that you don't throw any of this stuff away, you'll end up needing it all again, so screw it in there, so once that's in there now, that cam can't go forward or back, all it can do is let the cam spin like this. And you can see as I'm spinning that, it's rotating that, that oil pump drive shaft there. Get the grease shit up your hands. Um, I'm going to torque that bolt up now. Um, I've got a 516 socket here. Flip it over so I can... Um... Oh, it's already flipped. Flip it over so I can drive it to the torque. Alright, so 
have to adjust the setting on this so the um, camshaft retainer is um, 68 to 81 Newton meters on there so this uh, I've got this set at it's quite a large bolt so I'm going to full 80 Newton meters you can see it right I got a Newton meters there and I got foot pounds there so I'll just get this rotate out and you can see that's that pretty much done so next job will be to next job will be to get the um, timing chain on the front here so I have the timing chain here I still have the old one it's still in really good condition um, so you gotta look to see um, I generally like to keep the pin hole with a pin on the shaft when you can here down the bottom it's kind of easier to get on in that position um, what you also got to look for is is your um, you got to get this dot to dot when you're setting it up so it, I'll just bring up the top bit center here set oh, not top bit center. I'll just bring it to the top I'm not sure if you can see but right there there is a little dot on that um, on that crank gear and on on here you can see where is it there is a dot right there as well you gotta go nine links dot to dot so you can see that's in the middle of that link there so nine links from that dot you've got to line this thing up so I'll just reposition the camera and I'll get it set up a bit better so you can see and then we'll clock this around in the right position and we'll get that on so I'm just gonna set the sun on here loosely just excess oil down the bottom here which would drip out everywhere we're just going to sit on here loosely and just put some, put a couple of pan bolts in here just to hold it when i secure it upside when i turn it upside down i don't want oil and crap dripping all over everything a bit of assembly lube and a bit of oil squirted in around stuff in there um, right where have i put yeah, no, it's so freaking bad. Putting freaking tools down, not find them. I'm sure I have a little, right there, is, a little ratchet there somewhere. There it goes. So I'll just nip up these black bolts there just to keep everything intact. I've got some new, new bolts coming. I just like that fresh zip look the bolt on everything. Um, a lot of people just hunt like these. These actual pan bolts I'm putting back in here, the original ones there, they've got like paint and crap all over them. Um, I don't like that look. You can see this is what I'm talking about here. Just painted and shit all over them. Um, like I said, I'm just putting these in here for now just to, just to hold it all together. Stop your oil and shit from everywhere until the new bolts turn up. I'm a bit um, the poor planning on my part there, I didn't, didn't actually um, order the bolts in time for this bit of the process. Once I painted the pan, I thought, oh, geez, I don't want to stick those in. That nice clean ends with that dirty old bolt in there. So, so that's just nipped up there, that's all I need. I'm just going to flip this thing over now, and we'll get onto the cam shaft part of it and the climbing chain part of it. So I'll bring this camera in close now. All right, there we go. I'll show you what I do once once I've done it. So, if you had a, a genuine engine, um, I talked about um, dot to dot here, with nine links. Um, what um, what I'm talking about is that dot there, lining up with. Let me just turn this thing around. I'm just going to find that dot here, it comes coming around there. So, not sure if you can see it, but there's a dot right there. And on this, there's a dot right here. So when I put this timing chain on, on the original chains, um, genuine, I think they were single row, they had a T 
and another T nine links apart. So it's pretty hard to stuff it up. If you put the, the T link at that dot and the T link at this dot up here, you couldn't stuff it. So I, these chains have a joiner link in them. There's the joiner link right there. I generally put that joiner link at the first dot. It just makes it um, a lot easier to, to work out. Slide the bottom of the chain on the bottom gear. And find me dot first. There it is up there, it's too far. So I need to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've got to get that down to there. All right, um, turn the cam around a bit. Try and line that up. Let me just count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm not, I'm nine and a half, so I've got to take that back off. Come on, you fucking get off there. And go another half link around there. Get that back up there. So now I am. One, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm nine right on, right on that mark. So, um, that's pretty much how it goes. How that gets retained is, it has this weird looking um, blade here. The, the bolt hole is actually offset. The bolt hole goes in the center of the cam gear and the cam pin sticks out slightly here which holds it in position so it actually fits on offset so it doesn't actually line up perfectly on the front so what that's done there is it's because it's offset that um that big bracket or washer whatever you want to call it there it's made this like a cam lobe it's off center and then when you put your um when you put your fuel pump on through your timing cover, it comes up and there's a little rod that goes underneath here. So every time this thing goes around, this thing's offset. It presses the fuel pump lever up and down. And that's what makes the fuel pump pump the fuel. So double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine links. Right, nine links. So on these old engines here, they have a, they have a time and chain tensioner. Um, Pretty hard to find these in these old engines now. A lot of people throw them away, and the new the new chains are a lot tighter on here than this. You can see it's got a little bit of flex in it. But what this does is it goes on here and it takes that um, it takes that flex out of it when it's mounted to it, right? So because it runs this way, it doesn't put tension too much against here. It just just keeps the tension on the chain and keeps the timing correct. Um, if I didn't have this on there, you could see I could pull it that way, or I could pull it that way, and I could make that timing of that cam slightly different whichever way I I pull that so this goes on here I have a couple of bolts down here that will retain it let me just make sure I've got it the right way yep that's the right way I'll torque these all up in a second put that on there get this one on here get that little ratchet these are the same tension as um, as those other bolts there before. Those um, sump bolts, eight to ten newton meters. I'll just nip this up for now. Put that in there. All right, that's just nipped up. I'll have to get the socket for that particular one. Right, we're on to lifter installation. I have these lifters, uh, Crow Cam. Crow Cam lifters. Match the Crow Cam that I put in it. Um, I don't soak them in oil. I just put plenty of lube around the outside like this. Uh, the reason I don't put them in oil is because you really don't want them to pump up when you're um, 
when you run it first time. Get these little babies in there. I've got the can lobes already lubed up. Now I've got the lifters lubed up. That way there's no issues on start up with lifter bind or any issue like that. I'll show you what I do as far as lubricating the lifter goes. I um I just get a little oil can and I squeeze it down the down the bore. Again, this is just a camshaft and engine assembly lube. Get all these badges down in their bores there. Ready for the heads to go on. Maybe we'll that's that some slippery shit that. Maybe we'll do the heads later tonight. Maybe I need to go out and get the kids swimming out there than the pool. Have a beer. Maybe even jump in myself. Yeah, a lot of people soak their lifters in oil. Um, yeah, that's a bit of an old school thing to do. They recommend you don't. You don't actually do that because they soak full of oil and then um, it affects your preload or it affects setting up your um, your valve um, what do you call it? your valve and rocker clearances You can tell the um, old lifters had a bit of wear on them. They were really difficult to get out of the out of these lifter bores. I had to get some internal circlet pliers and put them in the top there and give them a good squeeze to get them out. All right, that's the lifters in. No, it's not this one. Not one big one. This one's one. Oh, there it goes. Um, get the rag. Clean my hands. So then I get a little oil can here. I just get this and I just put it on the top and I just give the lifters a little bit of oil internal to start off with. Get something to pump out when they first start up. like a brass and um, a brass plug I'll show you the ones that actually come out of a couple of in this scrap up in here. So these were the inch and five eight the steel ones that come from factory and they just rust like crap on the back of them so um, all the new ones I make now are brass um, what I do is I put some of this um, Permatex Aviation former gasket in the bore, paint a little bit around the side of the actual welch plug, and um, and I bash them in with a with a socket. So I just make sure that it's got a good a good film of it all the way around the side. Um, back there. And then I make sure I got a good film of it around the outside of the 
free plug or welch plug as well. You can see what I got going there. It's a nice even coat of it. Then I put it in the side of the the block. It's got a it's got a it's got all the dimensions and size and stuff on it in there. Then I just grab a decent hammer and a socket that fits in the hole. Then I just give it a a good tap in there. And then put a bit of a clean cloth, clean away all the excess. Um, gasket material or, or gasket glue, aviation fluid, whatever you want to call it, aviation former gasket. And then there we go. So that's how neat it looks if you do it right. If you don't do it right, well, then you're probably going to touch more. And most people just um, paint them the same colour as the block. I reckon that looks like shit. I reckon they look great when they're like that. Like I mentioned before, I, I like seeing all the. I like seeing a nice clean gasket face. I like seeing a nice clean seal. Gets a little bit um, anal when it comes to that sort of stuff, but there we go. Paint that in there. Paint some on the outside of the. It's just a a plug that. I'm guessing it's in the water jacket and they can't cast the water jacket in one piece so they have to actually leave these openings and which way that's the right way up dries pretty quick and, and it's hard to get off if you let it dry so don't um, don't hesitate to get rid of it as soon as you can there we go it's two on this side like I mentioned before I'll um, I'll do the six on the sides of the block and then when I take it off this stand I'll um, I'll do the, the ones on the back the kids hounding me out there they want to swim in the pool so I took the cover off left them out there with their mum watching them at the pool having a swim it's a beautiful day must be like 35 degrees outside that's why I've got my sweat on here 35 degrees Celsius because we're in Australia yeah get that on there make sure it faces the right way up socket in there there we go again clean it off with a rag oh, looks mint alright that's that side done get this thing get that over the other side Same from there. Yeah, just oh, we can turn it right, up, right over like that. I, I like this aviation former gasket stuff because it kind of sets really hard on on your blush plugs. If you put silicon around there, then that's well, that was quite a tight force fit in there. Got a silicon joint, and um, so this is upside down now. So I've got to make sure I put this in upside down. There we go. Yeah. Give it a clean. 
one either. Let's see. Get some glue around the outside. Upside down again. Give it a hit. Give it a coin. One on this side, and then we, we're done. And then in here, make sure we've got it all coated with the plug. Double, double glue on it, like this is just precautionary. You could probably just either just put it on the Bosch plug if you're putting plenty on or just put it in the bore either way you do you, I just like doing it this way alrighty there we go last one in That looks pretty bloody neat, huh? Sweat my ass off here. Um, so yeah, that's Welsh plug installation on a Holden V8. There's the stuff I used. Aviation former gasket. It's about 20 bucks and super cheap autos. So that's that part done. Just to explain what I was talking about before around the water jackets, you see these bolt holes here. This one goes through, blind hole, blind hole, blind hole. This one goes through, 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 and through. So these two M1s here also go to a water jacket, but they won't leak into the engine because it's, the bolts are on the outside of the, of the head, but they'll just leak water outside. So you need to make sure you put some glue on the threads of them and all of these long bolts here as a matter of fact i'm just going to put on every bolt there then you can't make a mistake so you'll see i get this aviation glue here now make sure it's not too messy and i'll put it on the threads inside and then i'm going to wipe it off the head surface threads. Don't be shy with it. As long as you don't pour it in there, you don't want, some of these ones have got a blind hole, you don't want to um, fill the hole up with gasket glue because the, um, it will bind. I mean it will um, get like a hydraulic lock in the bottom of the hole and then the bolt won't tighten down properly and you'll end up Busting your, busting your block. So now just wipe that crap off of there, and then get a bit of a bit of brake and clutch cleaner again, and give it another hit over the top of that just to make sure it's clean. Um, my brake and clutch cleaner is over here. Let's grab that. Spray it onto the onto the rag. Give it a wipe over. And I've already done this about two or three times before. So, um, but what you'll notice is you always get some shit off all the time. So the cleaner you can get it, the better, the better it will be. Um, 
Now get your gasket, make sure you've got it. Okay, cylinder head time. So you can see here I've put the put the gasket on here already. I'll just take it off and show you show you something. On these on these gaskets here it actually tells you it says uh, the size there, I oh know it's AX140, and then it says top. So this top, you can't put it that way down. It's got to go this way towards the cylinder head. So um, it'll be easy to mix them up because this one fits over there and that one fits over here. There's no left and right, they're both identical. Um, so you just got to be mindful of that. Um, so that's, that's that on there. Let me just roll this over a bit so it's, the cylinder head's going to stay there while we bolt it on. This way a bit. Grab the cylinder head over here. I've already, I've already wiped the head down with braking, braking clutch cleaner. Right, let's get this baby on there. Make sure I line up the dowels. Get the right way around to start with. Oh, holy crap, Teddy. So now, all that fussing I was doing before around getting the, um, putting the head gasket on there and taping around and doing all that stuff, you can kind of see now why, why I did that, right? See how you can't see, you can't see the metal for the cylinder head in that gap, the metal from the casting, sorry, the cast block in that gap, it's all painted, otherwise you would see raw steel right there, right? So if you want to do a neat job, on your um, on your engine, make sure you get that right. If you don't really care, do it if you like. Paint the whole thing and scrape it off. Um, there's also something to something to think about. There's there's three different size cylinder head bolts on these Holden engines. So the external ones are these short ones, which is why I painted the Paint the bolts, so they're going to go in here. Then there's these middle length ones which go in the two centre ones in here, and there's these longer ones which go in the outer ones or the centre ones up here. So um, I might be better off to roll this back my way a little bit. just to hold it in position and I'll explain something to you again. Hey there, baby. Right, so these outside ones, they don't go into a water jacket. But some of these other ones internal, they go into a water jacket. So, um, the centre bolts don't go to a water jacket. The centre ones here just go into a little boss in the middle. So that's these let me just zoom in a bit for you. Sorry about the camera work there. So now you can see short bolt, long bolt, and these are the medium length bolts in the middle here. So you need to put, you need to put some of this aviation glue on the threads of those bolts, of those ones in the middle here, right? They go to water jackets. If you don't, you get water in your in your oil. Um, a lot of times people build an engine they forget to put some sort of sealant on those and they get water coming back out of the jacket up around the neck of the bolt uh, into the block and they, they think they're playing a head gasket but they haven't. They've just that's got a leaking bolt around here so um, pretty bit of a telltale sign. Take, this, take the rocket cover off the engine and you'll see the milky sort of substance around the neck of these bolts here. You know straight away that it's been leaking at those bolts um, and nine times out of ten you can remove the bolts re-glue them and tighten them back up again and you could fix your head gasket issue without having a head gasket issue so um, I'll, um, I'll lube up all these bolts under the heads so you gotta you gotta put some um, 
some lubricant under the heads up underneath here. Oh, sorry, where's the camera? Up under there, just so you get the right torque setting. You don't get like binding of the bolt on the on the block. Um, and you've got to put the aviation glue on the thread. I like to. I'll probably take the head off. Put it. Put a little bit of it in the thread internally, um, without making a mess on the head gasket. Put a bit on the thread just so I know I've got some in there and it's going to seal off. And then bolt it all back together. So I'll get that prepped and I'll get back to you. Right, so just so you know, in case you're ever looking for head gasket talking information, hopefully that's focusing there, is it? There you go. It says here, do not apply any sealant to the facing surfaces. Oh, get off my surfaces of the cylinder head gaskets. This is all bolts 1, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. You go through this three stage process. First stage, 61 newton meters. Second stage, 81. Third stage, 102 newton meters. Bolts three and five, which were those two medium length ones in the middle there, they only go stage one at 61. You don't retorque them any tighter because what happens is you can break the little boss off that holds it on the engine there. So, so special assembly information, coat all bolts except three and five with suitable coolant resistant sealant. Um, apply sealant to the joint where the inlet manifold and the cylinder head gaskets meet with the inlet manifold end seals in four places. So right up the tip up here when when you put the inlet manifold on, right at that tip there, you put sealant in there when you're putting the um, when you're putting the um, inlet manifold on. Well, I haven't got that ready yet. I've still got a, I still got a um, blast that and, and do a bit of aluminium welding on it. So yeah, right now we're just going to go through that torquing process. I'll just um, bring it closer for you and show you. Let's put this up here like this, and we'll get it right there. See if we can't get it down on top like that. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to zip up these bolts. I've got this impact driver on low torque. I'm just going to zip it up till it does one quick hit. So I've got to get a short extension for it. Or a long extension, what have we got around the... No, here's a short extension over here. All right, now, I'm gonna set my torque wrench to what it stated first. It said stage one, 61 newton meters. So, and again, on this one here, you can see foot pounds here, newton meters at the top here. So, if I wind this back, I can see I have 60 newton meters there. And this one doesn't give you exact millimeter increments. So I'm just going to touch more, all of them, to 61 newton meters. So, I'll go on this side here, Oops. shit everywhere here, and I'll torque these up. It tells you the bolting sequence here. I better better follow it correctly. Alright, it says one, which is this one down here. And it says two, which is this middle baby up here. Then three is this mid one here, so these two here go to three, and then four, is this one over here? And then five is this middle one up here. These ones here are at 61, that's them. Jeez, I'm sweating my balls off here, it's so humid today. It's like 36 outside there, I'm not sure. Where the hell this heat came from? Um, five. Number six is straight across from it. Um, seven is this middle one up here. Eight is this middle one up here. And now what? Nine 
is this one here. Turns the one down the back. Eleven's over here. And twelve's down here. All right, that's the 12 of them, right? That's stage one. So I'm just gonna zip through these, just check that they're all done because I am notorious for forgetting to do the correct sequences, even though I follow instructions. Still a man, hey? Men don't follow instructions real well. And they were talked up in the right sequence, so it doesn't matter to go through and check them all. Alright, second round. Um, so we skip we skip um, three and five, which are these two in the middle here. Second round is 81 newton meters. So let's set this up on 81 newton meters. Let's write on 80, do it a little bit more, lock it in. So one again down the back here. Two is on top. Three is there. We're not doing three. Four is here. Five is here. We're not doing five. We're doing six. We're doing seven. We're doing eight. Uh, nine. Right here. Ten is right. Ten is right there. Eleven's here. And twelve's here. Alright, last torque is 102 newton meters. So screw this up. It's so much easier to have a good size torque wrench. So again, starting with number one over here. Two is the middle one here. You can see how much more that goes. And I reckon if I didn't lube under the head of those bolts, it probably wouldn't do it. Three we're not doing. Four we're doing. Five we're not doing. Six we're doing. Seven's up here. Eight's over here. Nine's right here. Ten's down here. Eleven's up here. And twelve's down the back here. All right, just double check them all again, like I said, because I forget that I've got the sequence right. I'm not adding any more torque to them, so it's safe to do this. This is just a double check. Now, my advice would be don't put don't put the sealant on. Or don't put the sealant on the threads, and then just screw them in and leave them there. You have to put them in and get them torqued up straight away. So, all right, that's that side done. Now it's going to get a bit heavier now because I've got that, that cylinder head on that side. Gonna roll it over as soon as I get. There we go. Put this here. Get this head gasket off. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna punish her with watching the second one. You just see me do it. I'll just um, save the film and I'll save the time and just get it done and show you the finished product. All right, there we have it. Both cylinder heads are on. Um, the sequence gets a bit weird when you. You start with one, two, and you go three, four, you get five. You do that on the first pass of 61 newton meters. The second pass, you've got to ignore those two. And then you're going one, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Anyway, so once I talked them down, I then went back. I did the first pass, 61 newton meters, second pass. Um, like I mentioned, 61 newton meters, second pass was 81 newton meters, and the last pass was 102. Um, and then I went back and checked these, and they, they weren't at 61, they were just a little bit less. 
They were probably about, I don't know, maybe 55 after I talked the whole thing down. So I really talked these back at 61. These two and those two in there. Um, yeah, so just double check that. Um, it's worth it's worth checking that they're actually at torque. Otherwise, you could leak a head gasket in that point there. Make sure you've got plenty of beer on hand. This is definitely a three beer job, talking this down. I just turned the fan on over the back over there. It's probably a bit noisy, but geez, I sweat my ass off. Um, next job we've got to do is we've got to put the um, little push rods in. I have them here, ready to go. Um, once again, I just put a little bit of lube on the tip of the of the lifter just to keep it a bit lube when I first started up. You don't want everything to be dry. You can never have too much um, assembly lube. And then I just drop them all in through the hole into position. Get them in there. Probably the easiest part of the whole job. And it's kind of say it's exciting but it's kind of um, a relief to get this far that you now have push rods in the hole until you get your rocket gear on remember don't turn the engine upside down while it's like this and your push rods will fall out and your um, lifters will probably fall out as well there we go um, now rocket gear you've got your You've got your rocker and your bathtubs. So there they are there, rocker and bathtubs. Again, plenty of assembly lubes just to make sure it's not running dry. Sit it in your, in your bathtub. They call it a bathtub because the actual shape is like a bit of a bathtub. they call them, sit them in, a bit of um, assembly lube on top of your valves and on top of your rockers, sit them on there, a couple of bolts, and then these bolts don't go in them, I just put them in, put them in dry, I just put them all loose like this for now just to just to get them in there. So yeah, I just apply a bit of lube to each one of these points just to reduce the friction on startup till it gets oil up to it. There we go. And again, I won't bore you with it. I'll put them all in there and then we'll go through the, the sequence of setting them up. Right, all the rocker gear is on. Something I want to show you now is um, how to um, set up your your rockers. So what you got to do is you got to get a socket onto your crank bolt down the front. I haven't got anything on the front. The timer chain is still exposed here. And as I as I rotate this around, it moves the it moves the cam shaft as well. And you'll see. Hopefully you see these two. I'm going to try and work on these ones. You'll see. You see it's starting to push up that starting to push up that lifter there right now. So that means it's, it's rocking, like it's opening that valve. Right now it's open the one beside it. Once it's, once it's past that point, because there's no pressure on them, and it's back down on the, on the base circle of the cam, you can see they're now flush with the, um, they're flush with the top of the um, housing there. So what you've got to do then is you've got to, You've got to torque these up to 28 foot-pounds. I have this set at 28 foot-pounds here, right? So you can just spin them down. You know they're not rocking there. So just nip them down like this. It just starts to push the lifter um, 
plunger down a little bit, you'll see it just puts the lifter plunger down a bit there, and then just torque these up. My battery's low on this thing, so I can't. <laughs> that's going to piss me off. I've got to change the battery in it before I can go any further. But anyway, the idea is have it so it's on the base circle of the cam, and by doing it without your manifold on, you can actually see it. Um, the other way is you can sort of just feel tension on your on your push rods just as you sort of get it to just to nip up and you've got to wind it up to 28 foot pounds so they screw right down hard up against the bottom on that boss on your cylinder head there's no there's no free play there's no nothing in them they're just hydraulic you see once it's once it's torqued down it's still you can still push against the plunk hydraulic plunger of the lifter so yeah it's um pretty Pretty simple process. Hopefully this hopefully this will last long enough to work. Here it beat at 28. Oops. 28. So that's that one done and that one done. Again, I'm not going to bore you with every one of them. I'm just going to go through and do them all now. I can see this one here is starting to rock. So I've got to turn the front of the engine over again. Until I get that one to back on the base circle of the cam you've got to push them down because the um there's no actual pressure on the on the valve gear there you go you see the lifter's gone right back down again and then they're both down screw it up this is turned off because the battery's freaking flat anyway I'll go get my other torque wrench and I'll torque them up. So this one here is just a Auto Pro, Tool Pro, so what do you call it? A super cheap Auto's digital um, torque wrench. It goes on your on your ratchet, on your um, breaker bar, and you just set it to newton liters, foot pounds, inch pounds, whatever it is. They're about 75 bucks, they're pretty cheap. And you just spin it around and it, take, it checks the tension, potentiometer, something inside here, and it beeps like beep, 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 when it's coming up to torque. As soon as you hit torque, the light will flash red to say you're at torque, and um, it'll be a constant beep instead of a, a short beep sound. So, pretty simple for little jobs like this. Um, I recommend you get one. It doesn't have to be Tool Pro; it could be any brand, but um, it's good to verify and validate that your actual torque wrench is talking things up. Or you can do cylinder head bolts with this thing; it works to that that torque setting. So, um, something to look out for and keep in mind. Okay, that's it for this episode. I've got to do some work on this manifold. I'll show you what I've got to do to it. I've got to get it. Um, I've got to get it um, blasted. Um, you can see here where I'm not sure if you can actually see it, but see how the water jacket is eaten away. And that water jacket normally looks like this one here. It's a blank. So I need to build that back up as a blank. I can actually almost see daylight through the end of it. If I can't fix it properly, um, I'll get it welded, I'll get it remachined and skimmed and, um, and use it if I can. It's the correct one for this car and I'll get it, um, I'll get it blasted. Um, I'm probably going to build a, um, a soda blast or a, or a um, hydro blast, um, hydro blast set up out of my um, sand blasting tank over there. Um, I'll probably show you what I do for that too, so then you can sort of blast all your products like I mentioned before. If you just, if you just sandblast, they turn out really shitty grey like this. Um, and I don't like the look. It's supposed to be a nice, I don't know, like a satiny sort of grey, not, not white like it's turned out here. So um, it's actually soda blast. It's a soda blast and sends it grey like that too. So um, keep watching. Um, hope you're enjoying the videos. If you are, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button. Share it with your mates. Um, don't share it with your mates. I don't really care. Just um, hope you enjoy what I'm doing. Cheers.